On matters food security, very important right now to hold to account uh, people in authority to ensure systems work in this country. And just to give us uh, the insight of what we need, a week after President William Bruto directed that farmers who had fallen victim to the fake fertilizer scam be issued with genuine input. A section of farmers drawn from the North Rift region now want the Ministry of Agriculture to fast track the compensation process. This came as leaders from the North and Western region demanded action from the government as Elvis Kosgei now reports. On March 5th, Robert Kiprop walked into the National Cereals Produce Board Depot in Eldoret to get his share of subsidized fertilizer. And after paying for 50 bags each or 50 kilograms of the inputs as the planting season kicked off, to his shock, he discovered late last month that all the planting fertilizer branded as Kel Green was a mixture of crushed tones and animal waste. Niko na resiti, niko na mbolea nye ni hizi mnaziona hapa, mbolea ambayo mukiziona ni kama matope. Ukishika hivi ni, ni matope tu, hii mwekwa ro, ro, inaito nini? Hii, inaito nini natural ya ngombe hii? Roo kaukang na imaongeza hizi ni mao za teraso. Hii nye kundi nye kundi ni mao ya teraso. Hata hii nye upe sijui ni nini. Since the beginning of this month, Kiprop has been visiting NCPB depot, but all his efforts to get compensated has proven futile. He now wants the Ministry of Agriculture to fast track the process since President William Ruto had issued a directive. Head of state amesema tupewe mbolewa tupewe. Mbaka sasa was there the other day when I ambia bado. Bado tunongoja instructions to talk above to know which is which above this came as leaders drawn from the north and western region demanded for the ministry of agriculture to move its speed and intervene president has come out on record that those people who perpetrated this and this act of immorality and ethical practice in business should be taken into action and proper and absolute law <laughs> Hawa ni wale watu ambaye wanataka kuharibu wakulima wa inji na tunaomba ya kwamba wale watu ambaye wanafanya jambo ambaye haikubaliki katika inji tunaombea Mungu wale watu waweze kutolewa On Monday while speaking in the county of West Pokot President William Ruto directed that farmers who had fallen victim to the fake fertilizer be issued with genuine input Elvis Kosgei, KT News, Wasingishu County. Kenyans and honorable members, when the president took over power, he was very big on, you know, um, ensuring we subsidize the production. Um, he is a farmer himself, of course, on record. Um, so he would understand what, what farmers need. Um, and of course, looking at how he put his government together, the CSS, etc. This particular program, I believe, and of course, uh, we have the chair of the Agriculture Committee in the National Assembly um, here to correct me. Uh, the program you know, was to offer subsidized fertilizer at half the price of commercial fertilizer for everyone. And here everyone means all Kenyans, all right? With a subsidy outlay, we were looking at the program was intended to bolster Kenya's agricultural sector and help to stabilize food prices. But sitting here this morning and looking at that farmer who has just shared his predicaments, Senator, one of your main, main authoritative jobs given to you by the Kenya is oversight. Yes. When we started, we had an assurance that these fake fertilizers mm. were stopped from circulation. Mm. We yes. have so many stories going around. Yes. Kenyans need to understand, yes. is much really being done to safeguard them and their welfare, their children and their livelihoods? Let me give you a three-step process that is going to ensure that uh, Kenyans once again can bounce back with confidence. Because the fertilizer subsidy program was going very well before it was interfered with by those waterpellies who are ordinary criminals in Kenya and who have done many other criminal activities and which need to be stopped. Number one, that fake fertilizer was stopped. The president has acknowledged. Do you understand the meaning of a president acknowledging there was an error, there was a mistake? That means that conversation stops there. It pauses there because the executive has taken responsibility to say 
we acknowledge something has gone wrong and the fertilizer that has been given to the farmers was not the one that was scheduled to be given to farmers because that program was succeeding so well and it increased it's principally increased the um, kind of food production that was happening across the whole 47 counties so what happened is this after he acknowledged the fake fertilizer it is not the president who does investigations in this country. And I've seen a confusion during this debate. But is he informed no, by the National me, Intelligence? Yes. Is he not informed? Yes, by he's them? already informed. I'm giving step by okay. step. After the acknowledgement, what should automatically and naturally kick in is investigations and prosecutions. And this one, we are not mincing words. Nobody's mincing words. So that we can move progressively to the next step on how we help Kenyans. This is the process that we must see the result, and I'm looking forward to seeing the result. Third step is compens not I wouldn't call it compensation. All right. It would be an exchange of, if I got five bags of fertilizer, which were not okay, the standard was not correct, I feel it is fake or it's substandard, ideally what NCPB should do, anybody who has a genuine voucher, and who took five, ten bags, three bags, mm -hmm. should bring that whatever was wrong and then comp be compensated. Is it public resources that should compete that person? We have the company that should indemnify. This com we must start holding people responsible for their criminal activity. This company that has given the wrong fertilizer, whatever it is, uh, whatever you call it, this has to give back. If it was one million bags, they have to bring back the cost of one million bags, and they don't have to bring it back in fertilizer because Kenyans will not trust their product. They have to bring back whatever resources that would be utilized to compensate the bags so that this is not a conversation we should be having. This should be a full indemnity on the bags that were taken, given to the farmers wrongly. Right. Those bags should be exchanged. And NCPB should give priority to exchange the bags that were wrongly given to farmers, which were substandard. With those three steps, we will now stop discussing the few bags of fertilizer that were fake. We will move now to, we have given the farmers the correct bags of fertilizer, and we now start production. So we don't waste our time, mm -hmm. and we don't use social media. Now, what we must be aware of also is, social media in Kenya is very robust. I tell you, like yesterday, we were in Moranga. Okay. We had a very successful event, mm. an event which uh, we were helping the Kigumo women basket weavers to fundraise, to support their baskets so that their craft can be done. There was a few minutes of um, disagreement there and very wrong energy coming into the event uh, and a tiff that happened between leaders. What the media reported, the okay. three minutes, the three, five minutes, mm. is what was a buzz in the social media. They did not even tell Kenyans that we raised 5 million and 90,000 for those women, those old women who are making those baskets, who will now begin a cooperative that can bring Pesam Fukone. So we have a robust social media. When an issue is uh, raised, mm -hmm. this fertilizer will be discussed even when it is resolved, which I think we use our energy in a very wrong way. Con Kenyans are very sharp. If we utilize our talents and energy yes. rightfully, mm. harness that potential, used it properly, this would be one of the richest countries in the continent. So I'm sure Kenyans are watching this morning. What are you doing with the social media this morning? <laughs> uh, 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 Honorable uh, Dr. Mutunga. Yes. I mean, it happens once, it happens twice. People seem to be getting away with yeah. things they do. This is what That's Kenyans are saying right now. Is. Um, you know, the CS once said that, and of course you've spoken of media, mm. that one of the key, you know, other mainstreams that um, exposed the fake fertilizer when it came out, he probably referred to them in a not so polite uh, name, probably, you know, people who don't know what they're doing until it came to the light. Yet, the media had warned about this way earlier. Mm. Are we reactionary as a country? This, that's the question. To say now that you're going to be impeaching the CS, is it a bit too late to have not killed the Kenyans' outcry earlier? Several issues. Number one, uh, let us look back at uh, the fertilizer from Russia, because that's a question still lingering in the minds of Kenyans. Did Kenya receive fertilizer from Russia? Yes, it did. Okay. That's 4,000 metric tons. Mm -hmm. But what type of fertilizer did we receive from Russia? Three types. 
One is potash. Potash fertilizer has more potassium, and I will take time to discuss. I, I hope I have some time to, discuss, to to explain what that means. Fertilizer has NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So Kenyan soils are not known to be deficient of potassium. Only in few isolated areas that we need potassium. So we have been doing a lot more of NP, nitrogen, and phosphorus instead of potassium. But we received a bit of potash from Russia. We also received urea. Urea has a lot more of nitrogen. And also we received a bit of NPK. These three types of fertilizers, one was, could have been used directly. But if you look at NPK steel, if you look at NPK steel, we must go in and ask ourselves what percentages are there. You've seen a bag marked uh, like that one, which you saw, 10, 26, 10. All right. 10, 26, 10 tells you there is 10% nitrogen, there is 26% phosphorus, and there is 10% of potassium. Nitrogen is for vegetative growth, for the sprouting of the, 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 the leafy part of the, the plant. Phosphorus is for the root development and the root growth. And then potassium is for the fruits and flowers, flowers and fruit, let's say. Now, when the soil doesn't need a lot of potassium, you have to supply less of potassium. The fertilizer that you receive from Russia mm. must have had to be reconstituted. That is why we moved from 34,000 metric tons to 100,200, uh, 100, okay. about 100,000 and 200 metric, metric tons, 100,200 metric tons, which means we multiply that fertilizer by around four times, three times, three and a half times. What that means is that we must have added nitrogen because it was potash. We must have added phosphorus because there was potassium. So we use the potash to make what is called triple 17 that was distributed last time as the subsidy fertilizer. Triple 17 means 17% nitrogen, 17% potassium, I mean phosphorus, and 17% phosphorus. So for you to get the phosphorus and the, I mean the, the phosphorus and the nitrogen, you must procure. And I would like us to be speaking from facts. We should not just come to the media and try to say that Kenyan government stole, the government cheated. The sold. government did not cheat. Okay. The government sold. The government received this and it treated this as ingredients to reconstitute the fertilizer that would have been useful for the Kenyan soils. Having sampled soils from different parts of this country and analyzed and realized here, we can actually generalize and say, if we have triple 17, we can basically use this fertilizer for production. That's what was reconstituted uh, through the process that we call blending. Right. And then it was distributed. Now, Doctor, I appreciate now, the back. content. I appreciate the content. However, I want to again echo what uh, Honorable Kibagendi had mentioned. His main concern was it was donated. Yeah, you it was donated. It. So is it but out of the procurement? Do, but and but do, we realize, do we realize that we had that 4,000 metric tons right. donated? Yes. And do we realize that this at 4,000 metric tons moved to 100,000 100, and 200 metric tons? Can we get that into context? Can we tell Kenyans the truth for once? And, and then I think so it they... multiplied by around three and a half. Okay. If you, multiply, if you take that four, it's around multiplied by three. Okay. Mm. So but three the times. That is one. The yes, so, uh, uh, so we yes, need to communicate the, the correct thing. Okay. Yeah. Yes, indeed, we received some donation, mm. but you know the government put in so much money. You see, we know how much money we voted last time for the fertilizer. And we can go, go back and ask ourselves, because we did as a committee, we go back and ask ourselves, if we put 7.5 billion shillings for the subsidy program, was 7.5 billion shillings actually used to procure a fertilizer? That's what we do. So if you go back, you realize so much of it was used to process the past part of the, the blending to pay for, for the blending. Part of it was used to procure directly because the blending, blend, blended fertilizer was not enough. Let me go back to the issue of the sugar, the fertilizer, and the fake issues. Yeah, before we hear from Honorable Bayer, because, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, now, the, 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 let me clearly remind ourselves, mm -hmm. when you want to lay blame, uh, we should lay blame correctly. The sugar issue, the contaminated sugar issue of last year was not in the Ministry of Agriculture. That matter was not handled in the Ministry of Agriculture. It was in the Ministry of Trade. And we remember very clearly who was accosted that time. It was not the Ministry of Agriculture. It was in the Ministry. The whole matter was already, it was already condemned and destroyed for destruction. Right. Then the Ministry of Trade somehow removed this sugar and many things happened. And I think I don't want to go to the content of that. Let's come back to this, <laughs> the, 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 the number of issues, the times that you have given subsidy fertilizer. 
We gave subsidy fertilizer in the May, I mean in the April, May, April, May rains, May, I mean March, May rains last year. We give in the November, December, I mean uh, October, December rains, and we are giving fertilizer the third time. Can we tell Kenyans truth for, the, for at least for once? Again, those seasons, in some several parts of this country, we have seasons. We have two seasons in a year. So every time we distribute fertilizer, we must also synchronize with the seasonality. And the issue has been probably, do we have this fertilizer in time? Is the distribution mechanism efficient? And we've been following that as a committee. Can we open up satellite centers to distribute this fertilizer closer to the farms so that it reduces the cost of okay. you know, transport? That it has happened. Now, the other issue that I wanted to mention is the current issue of fake fertilizer. Now, if fertilizer has been removed from the market, if it has been identified as fake, right. it, has, it has been removed from the market, it means the government has taken responsibility and done something about it. There is no way a police officer can identify a bag of fertilizer as fake if it has not been substantively regarded as fake. So the government declared this and is fake. That is why they are able to know this one is fake. Exactly. I want to. So the government has already taken this responsibility. I want to say this. We are. We have not. Finally, uh, we have not finished with this matter. We are moving out now to the NCPB stores this week. This week. And okay. when we sit okay. down and do our report and mm. present the report to the house. So and we are should be done. Yeah, should be we done. shall name them. I, and who, a bit who, of has, up there. who has what? Who has committed what? What? Uh, indeed, because the, the question process. here is who is responsible. There's a lot of back and forth and blame games where the Kenyans are Kenyans are at the center of it. What I want to say is this: anybody who has been involved in supplying effects of fertilizer or fertilizer that is not acceptable in this country, who authorized it, should, or who authorized should take responsibility. That is my take. And. Uh, 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 um, Kenyans need to know that uh, we have a government in place, a government that says things as it is. The president has said any person who's been involved in this matter should carry his cross, whether it is a minister, whether it is a peers, whether it is a staff, whoever has been involved in uh, cheating Kenyans in the issue of fertilizer should take his cross. And I want to tell Kenyans that this the time when we must always do fake things must stop. When we want to make quick back for for things that are not legit, must stop as a country so that we move forward. But uh, okay, I want to just yes. say one one last thing mm. uh, uh, that uh, the strengthening of the Kenyan shillings to the dollar means a lot for the economy of this country. Today, if you look at the statistics, the debt I think we are we we, we are shedding off almost uh, one trillion shillings in terms of. The strength, when the dollar strengthens, we are in terms of debt. The debt that this country has is shedding of almost one trillion shillings. What does that mean in term in context? It means we have more cash in the country. Uh, you know, the first charge on the the first charge on on account is usually debt. If you have uh, 60 billion shillings uh, in your accounts, and at the beginning of the month, the first thing that you need to pay first is the uh, debt. It's the first charge. Now. If we have shedded off over a trillion shillings because of the strengthening of the dollar, it means therefore we of have the more. Yes, the Kenyan mm. shillings means therefore mm. we have more cash flow so, because okay. mm. not a lot of money will be paid out. The money will remain in the country. So what does that mean to the, for the economy? Those areas that did not have enough funding, for example, uh, mm. uh, education. Now we can have more money to spend in education. If there was uh, uh, delays in disbursement of CDF, then we have more cash that will go there. If we had uh, no cash to counties, then we have more cash going there. Now, how does this strengthening of the dollar come in? Deliberate efforts have been put. I think the, uh, well, when uh, Kamau Tuge took over as, a, as a, at, at, uh, at CBK, he made certain changes that looked very unpopular. And what he needed to do was to tame inflation. And uh, you look at the inflation, you see it has gone down to 5.7 right now. And uh, because of the rains and because of the good investment, we will have inflation probably in the month of May go down to almost 4.0. It's not zero. thanks to the new euro bond? Uh, of course, the, the new euro bond was a deliberate attempt by government. Okay. It, it is government that came in. That's why I say there are systematic things that were done to strengthen the Kenya shillings against the dollar. One of them is to buy back the, was buying back the, the, uh, the euro bond, okay. which was a deliberate government attempt. Secondly, there was also the aspect of uh, raising the interest rate, the, bank, uh, the central bank rate. Okay, it was raised. People complained loans are going to be very expensive. But what, what did that do? It, what it did is it tamed inflation. 
And therefore, all these factors come in and the Kenya shilling has strengthened. Actually, if you look at global statistics right now, Kenya shilling is the best performing currency in the world. And that is a fact. If, it, if you read Bloomberg today, okay. you, you will see that. What does that mean to the Kenyan economy? Imports are becoming cheaper. If you want to import now, it is becoming cheaper. If you want to import inputs, it is becoming cheaper. The price of petrol has gone down. That means, therefore, productivity can go up. People who are running factories and using generators... No, and, I, I, and, uh, and I, I want to say this lastly. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I think we want to release... Uh, uh, Anthony, I, I want to, him to hear this one last thing. Yes. That the productivity in, in, in this country, because of uh, uh, you know, the strengthening of the dollar, the, the drop in the fuel price. prices, and now we drop on electricity, it means factories will have more money to do more investment, and uh, therefore productivity in this country will go low, the cost of goods will go low, and we have a big ripple effect just by the dint of strengthening the Kenyan shilling against the dollar. And this is good news for this country. And I think uh, Kenyans should be smiling, and uh, we'll even have more money to buy more fertilizer, more money to buy more uh, seeds, uh, yes. and to strengthen the agricultural sector. Uh, that you say, but yes. I'm not sure if other Kenyans are convinced. Unfortunately, we had to let Honorable uh, Kiba again go. I'm going to allow him yes. uh, to be on another set okay. uh, to purposefully, you know, clarify a number of things that ought to be clarified. But I want us to uh, ease up a little bit and um, look at the news yam because sometimes it's good to look back in the history. You know, honorable members, you realize that this is not the first time we're talking about fake fertilizer. Yeah. I know, Dr. Mutunga, you know that this is not the first time Kenyans yeah. are being exposed yeah. to fake fertilizer, let alone sugar. But one thing same, you know, in the same country, resurfacing. Let's talk about the harsh, tough measures that must be taken. Yeah, um, one of the things that I think we need to do is to revisit the penalties that that are provided for in the law uh, or, uh, against people are, who are adulterate taken products. taken seriously in this country to start with? Precis I mean, they are. Of course, if you, if, if you, if you find someone who has sold fertilizer, uh, more than 200,000 metric tons of fertilizer, you, f you find them a million shillings or 10 million shillings, that is nothing. It's a slap on the face. We need to revisit it and we need to make uh, this is selling of fake products or counterfeit products. We need to have very serious legislation that basically compels anyone who engages in charge such to pay heavily so that we may be able to curtail this. Otherwise, uh, when a government does contracting, because we have looked through the number of companies that had submitted their bids and the number of companies that were uh, okay to supply fertilizer in those who supplied the correct amount, I mean the correct quality of fertilizer and maybe one or two, they supply the wrong one. Those who supply the wrong product are not, we, we are investigating whether there is any relationship between the supply of the product and also the ordering of the product, okay. which, which is, which to us, mm. so far there is no evidence leaking. But we have not reached the end of this. We shall reach to go up to the end to find out whether there is anyone in, we can, we can, we can blame the procurement process or we can blame blame the identification and the 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 the, 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 the factoring of these these these, uh, the, these suppliers. But when a supplier decides to supply a counterfeit product, they must be held personally or individually responsible. All right. Because it is wrong to sell to Kenyans. Uh, you know, there's one thing. Not then they, 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 yes. let me mention something about the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper, in most cases, yes. is the Kenya Bureau of Standards, and when it comes to the life forms, is the Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Service. Plant health inspectors services also have a role to ascertain that fertilizer is, is viable, is, is giving what it's supposed to give. And uh, they normally do sampling. They sample 500, uh, they make 500 samples of, of products across the country every year. And they analyze these samples to just ascertain that the correct thing is being distributed across. Now, whenever we find a fake product, those who have been involved sh should be held responsible. What was done in the last predicament? On the fertilization issue, the process is still going on. We, uh, as a committee, we, have, we are going to place the report on the table maybe next week, and then after that we will clearly say who should be followed and who should be involved in the discussions. Uh, after that, then uh, the, the government machinery will take.
Uh, Senator, um, in his absence, of course, Honorable uh, Ruku Mberenot, Member mm. of Parliament, is mm. very vocal on this matter. In fact, he's vividly out there saying mm. he will personally mm. move, you know, bring it up in the House that mm. um, uh, particular personalities, especially, mm. of course, in the sport, CS Nturi, mm. is accountable to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, what eye are you looking at this with in, in the position you sit? I'm looking at it this way. Uh, obviously, I'm sure he's saying that in the context of the fact that uh, when a CS is leading a ministry, finally, um, there will be questions from many quarters on what is happening with that product, why that product has been supplied to Kenyans, and as a minister, uh, he will owe Kenyans an accountability process of what actions are being taken to forestall such um, anomalies or such, uh, product, such a supply of fake products to Kenyans. Because finally it happened, and it happened under the uh, Ministry of Agriculture. So the, the, the CS naturally will take responsibility. If it is health and something is not going OK, the CS for health will be called to account. If it is uh, Treasury, the CS for finance. So it's no more to call uh, to account any minister who is in charge of a ministry because that's what the Constitution would expect uh, to happen. But more importantly, is the thorough investigation that you lead Kenyans to understand what exactly happened, who supplied, what was the intention, was it to rob Kenyans, was, was it to mislead, mm -hmm. and, more, and much more important is the prosecution of anyone right. found culpable. That is where the buck will stop. So that Kenyans can learn, if you're given a chance to supply such a product um, of uh, very vital importance to the economy of this nation and to the livelihoods of this nation, to food sustainability, to agriculture support, that you cannot just bungle and do your, your, your crazy stuff by, by supplying fake products. That's the important thing. So for me, I would say, uh, people have to be called to account, and not just in agriculture, by the way. The minute we learn in Kenya that anybody given a job in public office will have to fully account, be very interested in the job they are dispensing on the table, All right. and make sure that it's quality service delivered to Kenyans, then we will have a nation that is moving forward. Did you know, by the way, if we called all the public officers to account, from the executive, actually, from the presidency, right down to ministers, to parliament, to judiciary, to legislature. If we called everyone to account, we would have a much better nation and right. better service delivery. All right, indeed. And of course, as we just uh, take a very short, you know, breather there, we, we have just 20 minutes to close this show. I want to take the news here. Let's go back in history. Because every time they say an intelligent person, a determined nation will look back in history pick the lessons and move forward. But this is a flashback of some very important personalities in this country. Sai Toti, the late, and the late former president of the Republic of Kenya, which a lot of political analysts and Kenyans have said, did one of the most tremendous good jobs as head of state. Mwaiki Baki, back in the museum. Let's take a look. Yes umefanya kazi mzuri. Na sisi vile tungalitaka kabisa ni kusema kwamba uendelee ili uweze kumaliza kazi yako kwa hii miaka mingine mitano. Kwa sababu umeshaweka msingi ambao ni imara zaidi na tunangelitaka uzina kujenga kwa huo msingi kwa hii miaka mingine mitano. Na mimi najua ya kwamba utaendelea hapo Ni warudishie mambo yenu tutakuwa tumepanua mambo haya na hapo tutakuwa tumefaidika.
<laughs> Indeed. That's very really good. Yeah, uh, it's, really it's, good. it's always good to look back mm. at where we have come from. But let's not lose track of what the in-house conversation is all about. Honorable uh, Kibagendi is back. Uh, it was just a very short-lived excuse, you know, moment. But yes. uh, you heard what the panelists said. Yeah. I know you are also streaming on YouTube. You are seeing some of the feedback from your constituents. Yes. What are Kenyans saying? And of course, Honorable uh, Senator here and uh, Mutunga and Honorable Bayer have been one voice said, whoever is culpable should be held account. Does not matter whether Kenya Kwanza or, or Azileo, you have been given a duty, perform. If it is out of incompetence, action must be taken. Are you not convinced enough? In fact, Honorable Dr. Mutunga gave you a laid, um, a laid detailed explanation as to why the donated fertilizer from Russia um, got to the bags they were and ultimately sold to Kenyans at the price it was. Are you convinced otherwise, Honorable Kibagendi? I'm actually impressed All right. by the chair of the mm. Agriculture Committee good. Uh, through the explanation he gave. Mm. But this is what they should have done then, mm. not now. Because I'm a member of parliament, I get a lot of information. Had I gotten this information, mm. we would not be talking about it today. Yeah? All right. But the other issue about this uh, government is misinformation or lack of informing Kenyans, which is a weakness on the part of this government. The other thing I would like to say is that Kenya Kwanzaa government has depleted creativity. You should go straight on and say, the CS for agriculture should resign. When they keep going round that whoever is responsible and what have you is unfortunate because this particular CS was adamant that there was no fake fertilizer. But they have confirmed that there was a supplier that gave fake fertilizer. So he should take responsibility and resign. And if the president is not dealing with him right away, what does that tell you? It means then the executive had knowledge of all these uh, 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 fraudulent activities. And that is why the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, government and its, its associates, they need to stop scapegoating. They need to stop scapegoating. When they got into power, they said, oh, there is no, we got empty coffers and what have you. Those, that was their scapegoat. They went on. Uh, the opposition is, uh, is, is, is frustrating us in, in our implementation of our, of our uh, 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 whatever policies. Uh, that was their scapegoat. They went, now they moved to the judiciary. The next thing, after they have been caught about uh, this fertilizer, will be again uh, a supplier, instead of someone actually taking responsibility. And that should start from the top in that particular ministry. And that is the CS Linturi. That is what they need to do. The other thing that I wanted to, to talk about is um, uh, on the issue of uh, Kenya lagging behind in its promises and in its uh, responsibilities. Uh, like now, we have CSS living a lavish life, walking around in watches that are worth two, three million shillings. The, uh, uh, the head of state putting on a jacket that is worth two, three million shillings. The head of and, state, and you say? Yes. And now they go <laughs> on to that. say, they go on to say, mm. Kenyans should live within their means. They tell doctors, you take 70,000 or go home. Yet it is a government responsibility whereby the government signed a CBA with doctors. 2017? Yeah, 2017. The president was part of it, and the current president was part of that government that signed that CBA. Before you get to the point of telling them off, you have to turn down and tell them, hey, can we talk? You don't take a whip. And when you get into the, when they get to the uh, boardroom where they're supposed to talk, they talk down on the unionists. That is an irresponsible... Honorable Kibagendi, why are you in those meetings? Uh, that, we, we watch them on news. Okay. We watch them on, on, on so news. So they talk down? Yes. Okay. They try to demonstrate to them that they are not important. And you need to know a CBA is registered in court when they agree. Now, what the government needs to do is first ag agree that there was this, we are unable to pay. We'll be able to take care of this for this period and we need to renegotiate. You don't take a hard stand and ensure Kenyans continue suffering. That still increases the cost of living. 
what the doctors are doing are right. That is their right. When Kome, the IG, comes out to say they're becoming a nuisance and what have you, does he realize uh, uh, salaries of police officers are never delayed? Salaries of uh, uh, KDF are never delayed? But when doctors who take care of our lives uh, have a genuine concern, then they are called uh, that they are a nuisance. And at that point, I want to say this. Members of parliament mm. from Kenya Kwanzaa and uh, the leadership in Kenya Kwanzaa, they need to realize they are arrogance. They cannot run this government with arrogance. They will not this, run this government with ambiguity. They just ensure things are not understood so that they can continue taking advantage of Kenyans. We will not allow that. And we are telling Ke Kenyans and the doctors, push for what is rightfully yours. But remember, while you do it, we have Kenyans that are actually suffering. So when you're called to the negotiating table, please sit with the ministry, sit with the SRC, so that we come to an understanding. But don't do it because you have been coerced by this government that is unresponsive to Kenyan, Kenyans' needs, that is oppressive, because it is actually oppressing doctors by right. doing what they're doing. Honorable Kibagendi, fair enough. Uh, we need also to understand here on this table because it's important to um, look also with the lens of solutions. You have spoken of the resignation of the uh, CSS uh, who are involved or who are holding office when uh, things like fake fertilizer are, uh, you know, in circulation. Yes. I mean, which other solutions uh, would you put forth? Because it is uh, looking at history. This is not the first time we're talking about fake fertilizer. You sit in parliament, you understand the law. Yes. So besides calling the CS to resign, saying it Those, is fully the government's no. fault, what do you expect? And then the other thing is, of course, these people must be taken to court and dealt with in accordance with the law. And we have, nobody should tell you that we don't have adequate corruption. So we we'll step to aside with. and allow the courts to... to now that is where we have a resign. problem. They, they lack integrity. Kenya Kwanza from the top to the bottom. Okay. The, if they had integrity, the CS would have said, allow me to step aside until investigations are complete. And investigation, don't, that, uh, we don't have to take two, three months. And the president should assure him, if you are not culpable, in two, three months, I'll bring you back to that position. So that investigations are adequately done in that particular ministry. But now while you are there, you keep shifting things and shifting blame and calling um, um, on, on junior officers to take responsibility. During Ke uh, President Kenyatta's time, or during Ke uh, Kibaki's time, numerous, CSS were sacked because of being incompetent. But here we have the CS for, for transport who is doing a lot of, of uh, in, an, uh, inappropriate things. We have a lot of accidents. We have an airport that uh, is leaking all over. Nothing is happening. We go on. He, the money right. that are supposed to help uh, areas that are, right. are, 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 are mm. not doing very well in terms of road are being taken to counties that are already established. Ah, yeah. We have the CS for health. Look at what is happening in health. We have the CS for agriculture. Look at what is happening in agriculture. But nobody is taking responsibility. Honorable Bayer, is it correct that nobody is taking responsibility <laughs> at this point in time? And let me say this. This is not the first time a CS in the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, if that is what you are, people will call it, is being <coughs> uh, brought on the spot for what they would term put in put incompetence. You know, I always say this. I, I, I always demand high levels of responsibility right. for every person who's been gained in high office. Uh, and uh, that responsibility also boils down to accountability. But you see, there is responsibility and accountability. Can I account for what I have done? So when you say that uh, every time something happens out there, a CS must resign. Uh, today, uh, Nakumicha has a strike in her hands. Uh, there have been very many strikes by doctors in this country on issues that do not affect the, uh, is not a contribution by the personal uh, work of the CS. But you say, oh, Nakumicha must resign because uh, there's a strike. I'm coming to make my point. I'm, I'm just trying to say that uh, John the worst Saitoti, was in... John Saitoti was, was one of the most revered uh, persons okay. in this country. How many strikes did he face when he was Minister for Education? How many strikes did he face when he was Minister for Education? I know the universities. I remember when I was in university that time, was when was started. And uh, Professor Saitoti was Minister for Education. Mm. There was a prolonged strike. Uh, there was a strike for, in education for, that lasted over six months. 
you know, schools were closed in this country yeah. over six yes. months yeah. because there was a strike. Did the PS resign, did the CS resign at that time because of that strike? No. Did the government resign because of a strike? There was a strike for doctors long period of time during uh, um, uh, even before this collective yeah, bargaining Clubbers, agreement. Yes, yes. Uh, 20, actually, 2017. Yes, 27, yes. That's when this yes. uh, there was a, uh, agreement a came very up. prolonged strike. Yes. Well, what happened? When I, uh, I was a student in the United States, there was a strike for the longest strike lasted nine months in the in the U.S. for s schools, and they were closed nine months. You know, in a, one of the states there. So industrial action that workers take for things that they are bargaining for should not constitute a misdemeanor or an, a, an, an issue on the CS. The question that we need to see are the issues that are there being handled. Mm. I would like the doctor strike to be ended very fast. All right. Very fast. I would like it ended very fast because it is affecting people. Mm -hmm. But when you have a strike, you have an industrial action. It's a give and take. When you have adamant people that are being propelled now more by politics than necessarily the issues that are on the, on the CBA, then you have this kind of stalemate. Because every time you have a strike, and you know, a strike is, is constitutional. You have even courts that can arbitrate. You know, you have a process of how to handle a, a, a dispute. People need to come to the table. And I would like to ask the doctors. Okay. Yes, they need to come to the table and agree, or disagree, but discussions must continue to be there to ensure that the health sector in this country does not collapse. But I do not want to imagine that a doctor celebrates, you know, they take the Hippocratic oath, that they celebrate that people are dying in hospitals. You know, I struck by doctors, there was a time, there was a time when, um, uh, should doctors go on strike? There was a discussion in this country and even uh, in the world. Should doctors be a cadre that goes on strike? Looking at the moral issues. You know, if you go on strike because of uh, in, in a factory, you know, you can actually catch up with production mm. if you resume. When you have a strike by doctors, the sickness is not postponed because there's a, a strike. A patient dies. We are losing people every day. Do we want to take pride in that? Do we want to still say, we are on strike, let them die, we are on strike? I think we need to come to a level where we need to classify some of these cadres, where they can go fully on industrial action. How are, are we losing people? We are mm. losing lives. And okay. I would like to ask the minister in charge. Yes, as you put together the And the remarks. doctors yes. and everybody else to come to the table and negotiate and end this strike. What the government is offering you know, is a give and take. You can't insist on 206,000 even when the economy but is But you can't having, insist on 70,000. Yes, then people need to come to the table and discuss All right. so that we have a solution on this doctor's strike. We would like people to be... My people in Kilifi are dying because the doctors are on strike. Right. And it will not be postponed because death will not be postponed by uh, a strike. People continue to die. But I would like to ask the doctors to come back treat patients and end this statement it is not necessary and it is not good for the country okay um, yes. uh, thank you very much uh, yes. honorable Bar. i want yes. to hear what's happening in muranga county because the truth is this thing is trickling down to different counties you saw kiambu county the other day and of course i come to you dr mutunga for your closing remarks um uh, senator please as you put it together the closing remarks mm -hmm. What is going on? Because you do realize there's a role of the national government. Even mm. as we're looking at, you know, the root or tough choices mm. start to bear fruit. Mm. Still, the health at the heart of a human life mm. is very important. What is happening um, in Moran County? What would you like to say um, at this point in time? In terms of the strike, I yes. assume? Yes. The um, I think all counties are suffering under this strike. And I want to say at the very onset, including Moran County, because the health factor and the level of care that is being given is definitely affected by the strikes. You know, uh, the, medical, uh, the medical field is one field which is so dependent on doctors. Almost close to 80% is dependent on the doctors. And that's why you find when you're choosing the doctor who is going to treat you, you go for a doctor who you think understands what they are doing on issues of anatomy. Now, myself, I would say this. There was a CBA, and doctors, we hear you. We actually think, Kenyans actually think very well of you. I personally think very highly of doctors. And doctors are good people. I want to give you that assurance. Doctors are good people. I don't think it's in the category of a profession that wants to walk on the streets every day, holding placards when patients are suffering in hospitals. 
And there may be a challenge with that CBA because of the resources. So the reality vis-a-vis -vis the agreement that was there is where we are not having an excess because when a doctor is holding the CBA and saying that uh, uh, this I'm entitled to from this year, and actually that CBA is signed up by the, all actors, it becomes a legal document. You know I'm a lawyer in, by profession, so it's good to be fair on documentation and agreements that are signed. Binding, but, yes. Yes, agreements that are binding. But having said that, the point is this. Uh, doctors are being pleaded with even by government that while we may want to pay as per what is in the CBA, we do not as yet have the capacity resource-wise to be able to meet the needs that are in that CBA. So for me, it's a personal plea, first of all, to doctors. Though they're fighting that against yes, resources for because, the CSS Because everybody things. is, both parties could be grandstanding okay. in their own position. Saying as government, everybody should understand we have a heavy debt burden and to stabilize even the dollar, what the government did is to meet its debt obligation which is a responsibility for everybody. So for me, my personal plea to doctors yes. is this. It is not that government is not hearing you. Government has had you, by the way. And the best we can do, let's look at the lives that are behind. When we leave a hospital, when we leave a clinic, when we leave a theater, and somebody is on the theater table, there are some professions, there are some professions where before you walk out, you must think of what is my calling around this person. If I can save lives, Let's save lives as we discuss what right. is on the table. And I believe also those who are negotiating for the government, if there is anything you can throw to the doctor, even if it's not today, it's another one, two, three months, let's have hope and tell them that we can actually improve this. Mm. As we continue improving our debt burden, reducing our debt burden, they'll be given priority in terms of being considered. But let's have the doctors come back. And I personally plead with you, please be merciful to the Kenyans, come back to work. Nobody wants to fight of a fight with you on matters of health care. Come you, back and we'll discuss the health care. Uh, thank you, Senator. Anthony Kipagendi, your closing remarks as I close. Uh, also with, first, uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, I have seen uh, the head of public service say there is no more pay rise uh, right. to civil servants, uh, which is uh, quite unfortunate huh? because with the increased taxation and increased levies that have gotten into people's pay slips, uh, government ought to have increased or improved on the pay that they are giving Kenyans. While they say this, you realize the president is budgeting for almost a billion shillings to improve on his uh, dias at State House. Doctors just need four billion shillings uh, to, to, to deal with all the issue you're seeing uh, uh, happening now. But State House and the budgetary uh, arm of this government has gone on to allocate a billion point two shil million shillings to go to the office of the uh, first lady and second lady. Where are our priorities? What are we thinking about? You can't be telling doctors we don't have money. When, while you live in Lajis, when, while you, you, you are lavishing in, 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 uh, in uh, 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 big brands, you know, that is one thing that this government ne needs to do. We need to have priorities in terms of what uh, is important for Kenyans, not what is important for the president and the people around him. The second thing I would like to say is that as as doctors mm. indeed go on on uh, on strike, like uh, Senator has said, we need to get to a point where we we have to agree. We cannot go on like this forever. But the issue here is government doesn't seem to know how to negotiate. You don't come with a whip or with a gun. You have to say, this is a legal document. Yes, we agreed. But we are not in a position. Mm. We are taking cut all the way from the president. I'm taking a pay cut of 10%. All the way, members of parliament and everybody. So even you guys, why don't you uh, actually uh, agree to, to we, 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 we reduce on this amount? And to finish, uh, yes. this is out of what we are discussing. Okay. There is a big problem in this country, the drug problem. Young people are abusing drugs all over the country. All right. Drug and substance abuse is a major concern for our country. Mm. And hence, I would like to urge, uh, especially those of us in leadership, mm. to go out there and talk to our youth so that they get out of this uh, uh, problem. Getting into drugs is easier than getting out of drugs. 
or keeping out of drugs is easier than actually getting out of drugs. Thank so you. I encourage young Kenyans to keep off drugs. Thank, Thank you. you very much for that. Uh, you know, you know, word to the young people this morning. I'm sure that's very productive. Dr. Mutunga. You had forgotten you, me completely. The, the last, <laughs> usually the best laughs last. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, th thank you very much. Uh, I, I just want to put one issue in context. As we look at all that is happening in the country, yes. and as we have the blame game, blaming the government, blaming, blaming the, the executive, blaming everyone, uh, I think in, in, in parliament or even in committee, whenever we, before we start discerning any business, we pray. And there is a content of the prayer I would like to recite. Okay. Mm. That we see, we consider all matters under our deliberation mm. in so just yes. and what faithful a manner. Yes. 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 In so yeah. just and faithful, faithful a manner, a manner. Mm. that we will, that we will give, promote honor and glory to God and even we, to the people mm. whom we represent. Mm. Indeed. So I think it is good to be very truthful here. When we are looking at individuals and uh, people who have been given responsibility, uh, we need to be very fair to them as well. They are human beings. The idea is whose decision was said that led to the mess, number one. Is it a decision or lack of decision? Is it action or inaction? That's, that's what we need to, to, to pin Thank the you. person mm. involved. Mm. I want to correct one issue that, uh, that I don't remember very, brought very on the table. Because of time, sir. Uh, that uh, currently the CS Agriculture is leaving issues to the juniors. We have interviewed him, and he refused. His peers did not come. No, we actually said on he said on live he TV is, that he is, he is not the, the ministry. He's the only one who spoke. But he said he's not the ministry, and that there are other people that were also there. Are other people involved, and, and, and that is what the, the investigation is leading to. Right. It is showing clearly there are people who have done the wrong things, and people need to be held responsible at individual level, at that capacity, at decision or lack of decision. All right. That's why we're to I am actually very honored that uh, you say a prayer in the house. And as we close, I think it is important. I do not know if you can in one voice um, uh, recite that prayer for us. <laughs> um, is it possible, members? Yeah, it is possible. Please, no, can the, chair, the chair will uh, take it for us. Chair, chair, please help us recite this prayer. The, the, the parliamentary prayer? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. I, I, I can give you the parliamentary prayer. Let me just give you the prayer. Even as he gives us the prayer, and that is yeah. how we're going to exit this morning on Siasa Fiesta. Yeah, nice. Just put the prayer for me ready. As honorable members, we appreciate that yes. you are a part of this discussion. Somebody once said, it is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. And when character is lost, all is lost. Mm. Kenya, mm. think beyond it. Think mm. beyond I, and mm. we move beyond to we. Standard Media appreciates your viewing and I want to appreciate all of you, honorable members, honorable Veronica Maina, nominated senator under the UDA ticket, Dr. Kinuithia Mutunga, Kinuithia Mutunga, <laughs> Mutunga uh, member of parliament Tigania West, uh, honorable Anthony Kibagendi, member of parliament Kichuji Church South, and honorable Owen Yabaya, member of parliament Kilifi North Tashukuru Sana. My name is Anki Dorison, but we end this with the prayer. Yes. We can close the prayer. Yeah. Yes. Let me pray. Yeah. Almighty God, who in your wisdom and goodness have appointed the offices of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society and the just yes. government of the people, we beseech you to be held with your abundant favor as your servants, whom you have uh, been pleased to call to performance of important trust in this republic. Mm. Let your blessings descend upon us here assembled mm. and grant that we treat and consider all matters that shall come under our deliberation in so just and fit for a manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the peace, prosperity, and the welfare of our country and of those whose interests you have committed to our charge. Amen. 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 That's the beginning of a parliamentary session. session. Thank you for watching. <laughs> have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.